Hey, what's up everyone? Kyle Buckland here with the Artful Souls. I wanted to do some short little videos where I talk a little bit more in depth about some separate components of picture making. So uh, there's a whole lot to talk about and I think uh, this will really help you understand some of the concepts I've been talking about throughout my demos. So if you've been watching the demos, you're familiar with um, the idea of a design stem. I talk about those a lot. And basically what a design stem is, is it's like an armature in sculpture. Uh, so if you're building a sculpture, you first build an armature, which is a support structure, and then you build your, your sculpture uh, on top of the armature. So um, in a very similar way, when you have a design stem, you are basically creating um, a structure to build your design on. And this structure is going to almost guarantee that your design has balance and harmony right off the bat. Um, it's very easy to... Uh, overlook design when you're first starting painting. I know a lot of folks are very eager to learn how to represent uh, three-dimensional objects on a two-dimensional surface and a lot of artists um, start off and, and really get really good at that but then they skip some basic concepts that if you if you implement them in your work you'll, you'll be able to create harmony but if you don't and you neglect these concepts um, it can really mess you up because what you'll end up with is the ability to create uh, and represent um, objects on your canvas, but, but they're not designed into any harmonious um, plan or, or composition, so uh, you, you lose the battle right off the bat. But there's some things we can do to, to make sure that that doesn't happen, and that's to implement a design stem. So there's lots of these design stems, but uh, one of the most often used design stems um, in landscape painting and also in classical composition is called the steel yard principle and basically what this is is a design stem that's based on physical balance so what I mean by that is if we think of a scale let's say we have a scale here and um, we have the pivot point for the scale right here um, and then we have a large weight on this end of the scale. Well, we know that because of leverage, we can balance that large weight over here with a smaller weight. We just have to put it way out here. So, so see how that works? So here's our pivot point. Now in our picture, our pivot point is going to be our center of interest. So if we think about a landscape painting and we have a road that, that goes off into the distance, um, and let's say we have a couple figures out there, uh, our eye is going to be drawn to that area. So notice it's not right in the center of the scale because we don't want our center of interest right in the center of our composition. So think about this pivot point being off to one side. And our weights, they're going to end up being, um, in this case they're going to be trees, but if you were painting a boat yard, this could be a large boat and this could be a smaller boat. The trick is you want both weights to be on a similar plane and you want them to have a similar value. Uh, so in this case, this is going to be a dark value against a light background. So we're going to have some dark trees. Now if you were doing something with a big dark background, both of the weights could actually be um, they could actually be a lighter value. The trick is you want both weights to be the same value. So now real roughly, I'm just going to sketch in real lightly here. Let's say we have our horizon line. Um, and then we have a road that goes off into the distance here. And down this road, we're going to have a couple of figures here. And maybe they're walking a little dog or something. Um, not really important the details at this point. We just want to figure out where our where our um, center of interest. So this is be our center of interest. Here's the scale is going to be the horizon. So right here we're going to have a large tree, and this is going to be a big dark tree. So let's uh, assuming it's summertime here, and the leaves are on the on the trees. So first I'm just going to mask this in with a with a big dark shape. We can 
have this branch come out here. Let's say we have a, a, a mountain back here. And then over here, we're going to have a similar value. Um, doesn't have to be exactly the same shape, but it's going to be smaller because just like the steel yard principle says, as we get out here, we can balance this large shape with a smaller shape of an equal value. So both of these are going to be big dark shapes. And, um, you know, what will end up happening is we can add lots of little details to this painting or to this composition, but because we are aware right off the bat that we're utilizing the steelyard principle, we are naturally getting a balanced composition. So I'm starting off with an idea of how to balance my big shapes. shadow here on this big tree. Shadow right back here. And so we could put a little fence here. So like I said, now we're getting into some eye candy. Um, and this is the, uh, you know, the fun part, and a lot of students want to rush right to just putting in all the details and that sort of thing, but what we really want to think about is our, um, we want to think about how our picture is composed. So this is a very basic example of the steelyard principle. Maybe we've got a big cloud up here. It could be summertime, and there's Maybe a thunderstorm brewing off in the distance. Get some dark. A little bit of darkness down here on the bottom of this cloud. And we've got this darker value here for the blue sky. Okay. And so we can add, see we can get into adding some little details now. Some maybe there's some leaves here off of this tree come down here have some leaves coming here off of this tree so we're adding detail but we're not breaking up that original design here we've got some little trees out here Some little birds off in the sky here, catching the wind. So we can add all these little elements, but because we've based our composition on a pretty sound design stem, what we end up with is a nice balanced picture. And um, I'll do more of these and talk about it. Like I said, there's a whole handful of these design stems, and sometimes you know we get we get one uh, we get a picture where we use two or three of these design stems in the same picture and um, we can start talking about that as we add on to them but I just want you to think about this one uh, and about how you can use it when designing a landscape and so for example this tree in reality might have been way over here and I might have had to pull it over into my painting to create that balance um, but that's okay because that's what we talk about when we talk about designing a picture um, we're designing nature and we're using the elements of nature in a landscape uh, to compose a picture. 
All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, you can give it a thumbs up. And also, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. I think this will be a great way for you to understand a little bit more about what design stems are and how to utilize them in your picture to create harmony and balance throughout your composition. Um, I'm going to be making some more videos along these lines. Also, these sketches that I'm doing will be part of the rewards for my patrons. So if you're interested in... Uh, supporting the channel and you also want to be eligible to receive some original art uh, click the link in the description below to check out my patreon page and learn more about that so I want to thank everybody again for all the wonderful likes and comments I appreciate it I hope you enjoyed the videos and um, get out there and have fun and, and happy paintings